If your mix sounds flat, that's because it probably is. Hi, I'm Jay, I'm a mixing and mastering engineer, and this week we're taking a look at how to use reverb and delay to get cinematic audio in DaVinci Resolve. Because here's the thing, you can nail your levels, get your EQ perfect, and dial in all of your compression, but if everything sounds like it was recorded in different rooms and just slapped together on a timeline, your mix is going to sound lifeless and disconnected. And that's where spatial effects like reverb and delay come in. Now, this is part three of a four-part series on how to get cinematic audio in DaVinci Resolve. In part one, we went over the four main parts of audio post-production and did our static mix. In part two, we tackled EQ and compression. If you missed either of those, they'll be linked in the description below this video. You should definitely go check those out. Today, we're working with the same project as before. Same dialogue, same sound effects, same music, same footage that was generated using Sora 2 Pro in Artlist. And speaking of Artlist, they just added something new that's kind of insane. Seedream 4.5 image generation. This thing creates cinematic visuals with lighting and rendering that actually look real, not that weird AI generated look where hands have seven fingers and perspective looks off. I'm talking sharp details, consistent subjects across multiple generations and scenes that actually make sense. It understands complex prompts so you get precise control and editing and because it's a smarter tool, it can easily handle scientific and technical information. So if you're working in film or ads or e-commerce or any kind of technical industry where you need to create specific realistic content, you're covered. Plus, it's available as image to image generation, so you can take existing visuals and transform them, which is super cool. If you want to check out Seedream 4.5 and get your hands on all of the assets and AI tools that you could possibly ever need as a video creator, it's super easy. Just click the link below this video and sign up for Artlist today. If you sign up using that link, you'll actually get two free months on top of an annual subscription and you'll be helping out the channel. So win-win. Huge thanks to Artlist for sponsoring this video and for continuing to support creators like me. And now let's dive into this mix and add some reverb and delay. Okay, so at this point, our mix is balanced, our frequencies are clean and our dynamics are under control. But listen to this. Well, here I am, my first day on the job. To be honest, it wasn't my first choice of careers, but it's no big deal. I've got plenty of time to do what I actually wanted to do with my life, right? Can you email me that report when you're done? Yeah, give me five minutes. Okay, deep breath. Here we go. hear how everything sounds like it's just sitting on top of each other. The dialogue feels like it's in one space, the sound effects in another, the music is just kind of there. Nothing feels connected. This is where reverb and delay save the day. <laughs> that rhymed. Think about it like this. When you're in a room, you don't just hear the direct sound of somebody talking to you. You hear the reflections off the ceiling, the walls, the floor. Those reflections tell you how big a space is, what it's made out of, where you are in it. And that's what reverb does. It creates those reflections artificially so it sounds like all of your dialogue and sound effects exist within the same space. Delay is similar, but it's a little more focused. It's basically an echo. When it's used right, it can add depth, it can create rhythm, it can make things sound a lot bigger without drowning them in reverb. Fun fact, when I mix music, I actually use delay on the vocals instead of reverb because it's a great way to fit the vocals into the mix but still have them sound front and center where reverb sometimes has a tendency to make something sound a little bit more washed out. Now, I want to be clear. The goal here isn't to make everything sound like it was recorded in a cathedral. The goal is to glue our mix together so that all of the elements sound like they belong in the same world. So here's how we're going to approach this. We're not going to slap reverb or delay on 
every single track individually. That's a nightmare to manage and it'll make your mix inconsistent. Instead, we're going to create effect sends. Basically, we'll create an individual bus for delay and an individual bus for reverb, and then we will send a signal from each of the individual tracks to those buses. That way we keep everything clean and consistent and it makes adjustments way easier down the line. All right, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and get this mix sounding like it actually belongs together. The first thing we're gonna do is create a couple new buses. So we're gonna come up to Fairlight, Bus Format. We're going to add two buses. They're going to be stereo buses. We're gonna rename one of them, Reverb. We'll rename the other one, Delay. That is not how you spell delay. Let's try that again. There we go. And just for good measure, we're gonna go ahead and just color our effects buses orange so they're easy to find in the mixer. Then we'll go ahead and click OK. And if we expand our mixer out a little bit, You'll see we've got bus four and bus five. They're labeled reverb and delay. Now let's load up our plugins. We're just gonna use the stock Fairlight Effects plugin. So first thing we'll do is we'll find our delay and we'll stick that on our delay bus, which is bus five. And then we'll come down and we'll find our reverb effect and we'll put that on our reverb bus, which is bus four. Now the next thing I wanna do is kind of subjective. What I want to do is kind of scroll through my timeline, maybe play it a little bit and, and get a gauge for the scene so I can actually set up a good room size for my scene here. So I'm just going to scroll through. And everything that I'm seeing here is basically telling me that we are kind of in a long, narrow office building corridor type thing. So this default is actually going to probably work really, really well here. So we're going to leave this as is. For the delay, we don't want anything too crazy. So we're just going to, this is actually probably fairly good here with the left and right, both at... 121 and 135 you don't always with a stereo image you don't want the delay to be the same on the left and the right side because that can actually make it sound a little bit too artificial so by having them a little bit different left 121 right 135 that's probably good we may expand that a little bit more but we'll We'll see. By the way, I know I'm kind of breezing over the settings in reverb and delay here. I do plan on doing some in-depth tutorial on each one of these plugins. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that. Now on both of these effects, I am going to take my dry wet mix and I am going to put it at 100% wet. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we are using these plugins on an effects bus. So we're actually gonna be controlling our dry wet mix with the send signal, which I'm about to show you in a second. Now, one other thing I wanna mention with reverb and delay, they tend to sometimes create a low to low mid frequency buildup and it'll make your mix sound a little bit muddy. So one of the things that you wanna do if the plugin you're using doesn't have it is you want to put an EQ on your effects buses and then use a high pass and a low pass filter. If you keep your reverb and delay kind of confined to the mid to high mid frequencies, you're going to be in pretty good shape and you're not going to have some nasty buildup in the low, the low mids or the highs. The cool thing about the reverb and delay plugins in DaVinci Resolve is they actually do have those high pass and low pass filters. In the delay plugin, you've got low frequency and high frequency. Right now it's set to 300 and 10K respectively. That's actually pretty good. And then on the delay plugin, we've got high cut and low cut. High cut is set to 12.5. Low cut is 108. I'm going to push the low cut up to probably about 200. And we'll start with that. Again, these are not static, set it and forget it things. Once we actually start 
putting reverb into the mix, we're probably going to want to tweak some of these settings or some of these levels again. Okay, let's close out of these plugins because we don't need them anymore, at least not yet. And now what we're going to do is we are going to send a signal from each one of our main tracks. So that's our dialogue track, our sound effects tracks, and our ambience tracks. And just for good measure, we'll also send our music track over there because we may or may not be sending that over to our reverb, but we're going to send our dialogue, all of our sound effects tracks and our ambience tracks to both the reverb and the delay buses. So what we're gonna do in our mixer is come over to bus sends and we're gonna click on plus. We're gonna send it to reverb and we're going to send it to delay we're going to do this with all of our tracks one thing that we also need to do real quick before we start sending reverb and delay is we need to actually route our effects buses to our main bus so we're going to come down to bus outputs and bus four we're going to send to main out and Bus five will go to main out. Now what I'm going to do is come over to my dialogue track. I'm gonna open that up. I'm gonna open up my send and you'll see we've got our send levels for reverb and delay. Currently they are all the way down. What I'm going to do track by track, starting with the dialogue, is I am going to start increasing the send levels of the reverb and the delay just a little bit at a time until everything sounds like it belongs together. Here we go. Well, here I am, my first day on the job. To be honest, it wasn't my first choice of careers, but it's no big deal. I've got plenty of time to do what I actually wanted to do with my life, right? Can you email me that report when you're done? Yeah, give me five minutes. Okay, deep breath, here we go. Well, here I am, my first day on the job. To be honest, it wasn't my first choice of careers, but it's no big deal. I've got plenty of time to do what I actually wanted to do with my life, right? Can you email me that report when you're done? Yeah, give me five minutes. Okay, deep breath, here we go. Hi, Editing Jay here. I did it again. I sat there for 10 minutes just sending my signals track by track to my effects buses and that is boring to watch and it's the same thing over and over again. I'm not gonna make you do that. I will say that there is one track that I didn't put any reverb or delay on. I didn't send the signal to the buses at all. I will explain why in just a second. Let's cut to when I'm all done. Okay, so I'm liking the way that this sounds. Again, it's very subtle. I didn't crank up the reverb really anywhere. And even on one of the ambience tracks, I didn't put any reverb or delay on their at all because there was already kind of enough reverb baked into the original ambience clip. So I just left that alone and kind of used reverb and delay on the rest of the tracks to try and match the reverb in that ambience track so that everything sounded like it belonged in the same space. So let's do a before. Well, here I am, my first day on the job. To be honest, it wasn't my first choice of careers, but it's no big deal. I've got plenty of time to do what I actually wanted to do with my life, right? Can you email me that report when you're done? Yeah, give me five minutes. Okay, deep breath, here we go. And in after. Well, here I am, my first day on the job. To be honest, it wasn't my first choice of careers, but it's no big deal. I've got plenty of time to do what I actually wanted to do with my life, right? Can you email me that report when you're done? Yeah, give me five minutes. 
Okay, deep breath. Here we go. You notice how much more cohesive the mix sounds now. The dialogue, sound effects, the music all kind of sound like they belong in the same space, like they actually exist in the same space instead of a bunch of different layers piled on top of each other. And here's the beauty of using effect sends instead of putting reverb on each individual track. If I don't like the type of reverb that I'm using, I can go ahead and change it and it's going to change it for all of the tracks. So my reverb is always going to match. Same thing with delay. It's great. It saves a lot of time and it uses less resources on your computer, which is super important. Now, a couple things to keep in mind about reverb and delay. First, less is more. It's really, really easy to overdo spatial effects, especially reverb, but that creates muddiness and a washed out sound. So if you're getting that while you're using reverb and delay, you've gone too far, back off. Pull back the send levels and let the mix breathe. Second, not everything needs spatial effects. Things like dialogue may need a little bit of reverb, but not a whole lot. And like you saw, one of my ambience effects didn't get any reverb or delay because it didn't need it. Just because you can use it doesn't necessarily mean you should. Definitely listen to your mix as you're adding reverb and make objective decisions. Does this actually need to be here or not? And third, don't be afraid to experiment. Use different reverb and delay settings. There's a whole just world of options for you when you start using spatial effects. So explore, experiment, figure out what works for your mix. Now, even with reverb and delay dialed in, the mix still isn't finished. We've got one more step to cover and that's automation. So we'll be taking a look at that next week. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. <music> 